Good afternoon, dear friends. Greetings to all participants and guests of the conference Super New Russia. What kind of country will you be? Unfortunately, I am unable to attend today's event in person. Therefore, I would like to express my sincere thanks to the organizers for the opportunity to speak on such an authoritative online platform. I am sure that this conference will work out those proactive solutions, which will allow Russia and Belarus to overcome crisis phenomena together and level out their negative systemic consequences for our own benefit. This requires converting today's social and political minuses into future technological pluses. Our Union state has enormous resource and intellectual potential. The main role in the economies of our countries should belong to systemic infrastructure technologies that we have and that neither the West nor the East has. It is the biosphere engineering technologies that will help unlock the potential of Russia and Belarus to the maximum extent possible and can take them to a leading position in the world within a generation then import substitution will become an anachronism. It will be them who will buy technology from us, not us from them. The advantage of the biosphere path of development is detailed in our program Rebooting the Economy of the Union State of Russia and Belarus. Most of my proposed solutions are already implemented and have proved their effectiveness in our testing centers in Belarus and in the United Arab Emirates, where I am based now. Today, there are more than 1,000 employees working on biotechnology projects at the Unitsky International Group of Companies, which I had, most of whom are engineers. Our parent company, the Belarusian Engineering Company, has been awarded the status of a scientific organization this year. Let me, as part of this report, briefly introduce you to the main directions that we are currently working on. Russia, being the largest country in the world, has all the resources, including intellectual potential, to become a trend center in science and technology. However, its position in these areas is weakened. The reason for that is the collapse of the USSR and the long period of rebuilding. As a result, in technological development, other countries are far ahead. Attempts to catch up with them within traditional industries are proving difficult to achieve. Therefore, it makes more sense to bet on innovative development in those areas in which Russia and Belarus will be the first. This is possible within the framework of the Union State with the help of engineering technologies, but not digital and artificial, but natural ones. What does the innovative option involve? First and foremost, the development of a model in which the environment will not be degraded where the interests of the economy on one side and convergence with nature on the other will be balanced and focused on the long term. The backbone of any economy is agriculture and energy. What do today's experts suggest for these industries? genetically modified foods and artificial meats that are dangerous to human health. And the switch to renewable energy is only possible if global energy consumption is significantly reduced. Is there an alternative? There certainly is. We propose a reboot of the production system through innovative biosphere technologies. What areas are included here? First, it is Relic Solar Bioenergy. Second, it is Next Generation Logistics. Existing Level 1 transport will be replaced by more efficient, greener and safer Level 2 transport. Third, it is the creation of a new type of settlement. Linear cities based on pedestrian clusters will provide their residents with everything they need. Let us look at each of the directions in detail. Bioenergy and Biosphere Agriculture Energy stored in lignite and oil shale is relic solar energy derived by living organisms that lived on the planet over 100 million years ago. 
That is why oil shale and lignite will not be used so much for electricity and heat, but for biohumus. Biohumus is the basis of any soil fertility. That is, around relic solar biohumus plants. When applying 200% humus, even to a desert sand, will create highly fertile soil on which gardens can be planted. Just imagine that the peculiar waste products of such biopower plants would be grapes, apples and other agricultural products. Biovoltaic plants could be combined with agricultural production. Then the excess carbon dioxide from their operation would not only be chemically bound in the biohumus, but also fed into greenhouses which would increase their productivity many times over. The carbon will be converted into dietary carbohydrates, proteins, vegetable fats, vitamins and other assorted living matter in the form of thousands of organic compounds comprising virtually the entire Mendeleev table. It has long been known that naturally fertile soil is the key, which can be called the global immune system of the Earth's biosphere. The health of all living organisms on the Earth, including humans, depends on its condition. Transport Overcrowded cities with constant traffic jams on the roads have become a serious problem. However, there is a solution. It is possible to build a string track directly over a city road or tramway. A string rail flyover requires minimal land allocation for construction. It does not disturb the terrain, preserve the soil, and does not interfere with the movement of ground and surface water. The track structure can be placed adjacent to houses. And thanks to the level 2 factor, the anti-derailed system and the automated control system, traffic jams and accidents are avoided completely. Energy consumption of unicars with steel wheels is 5-7 times lower than that of cars and traditional electric cars with pneumatic tires. On top of that, the production of car tires and their disposal are also harmful emissions. The UST transport has solved this problem. It only uses steel wheels, more efficient and more durable even than traditional railway wheel sets. The UST transport can be used for many different tasks, for example for high-speed links between a metropolitan area and the suburbs. It could link parts of a city separated by, say, a wide river. But its effectiveness is particularly noticeable in areas with difficult terrain. Building a track there with spans of a kilometer or more would cost an order of magnitude less than building railway and automobile overpasses. And the almost zero impacts of USD transport on nature allows it to be used in areas with strict environmental requirements. Energy efficiency, safety, environmental friendliness, adaptability and affordability are the main benchmarks of the UST transport. With these characteristics, it is able to provide answers to the challenges facing the transport industry today. The arrangement of everyday life in a linear city. A residential cluster of a linear city of about 100 hectares is an urban type pedestrian settlement. It will comfortably house between 2,000 and 10,000 inhabitants. The residential area of the linear city cluster will be divided into neighborhoods where common areas for residents and visitors will be located. A high-rise building with a UST station on one of the floors or on the roof will be located in the middle of the residential area. A string rail track structure will run above the forest belt at a height of more than 10 meters, which will be at least 10 times cheaper than a traditional underground. The apartment blocks are combined into an apartment building, a kind of horizontal skyscraper, a high-rise building lying on its side. Each house is designed to accommodate an average family of five people and has three floors, basement, residential, and attic. The mansard roofs of each horizontal skyscraper are designed as glass houses.
In this way, the inhabitants of the linear city cluster will be fully supplied with everything they need to live. With organic food, potable water, clean air, green energy, and decent housing. With a steady supply of basic goods, products and services, the volume of demand for everything else will become much more predictable. The risks of overproduction, and thus of economic crisis, would be reduced to zero. Such technologies are already being certified and tested in two research centers located in Belarus and the United Arab Emirates. Today, six types of innovative buildings are already in successful operation. These are the kind of buildings that can be erected in clusters of linear cities, including rooftop glass houses, subtropical greenhouses, and a garden inside the house. What effect could Russia and Belarus gain from such innovations? Setting up mass production of biohumus from lignite and shale would allow to export this product around the world, and the demand for humus would be much higher than the demand for oil. Changing agriculture to humus would increase yields and the quality of agricultural products, all of which would become organic. The creation of a new transport infrastructure industry based on the USD technology will secure orders for companies across a wide range of industries. Construction of linear cities will be a boost to the real estate market, will allow to develop hard-to-reach areas. Many would say that putting such a program into practice would be too vast, material-intensive and very expensive. But is it really so? After all, the costs necessary to reboot the economies of Russia and Belarus, united in the Union state, are not that significant. They are at the level of other Russian programs. The Russian transport strategy approved in 2008, for example, was valued at the same $5 trillion. The Union State of Russia and Belarus will become a worldwide leader in rebooting the global economy. In the future, it will significantly improve the standard of living for all people on the planet, on all continents and in all countries, with no numerical limits and no environmental damage. With the Union State, to which the collective West has in effect declared war, the main weapon will be not supersonic missiles and nuclear weapons, but mineral and territorial resources, which is about 20% of the world's reserves. These resources should not belong to the West and to the professional liberal-oriented globalists, not to bureaucrats and oligarchs, but to the state and the people. We should shift from consumer capitalism to a creative and socially oriented economy. The main thing is domestic resources, reserves. We need to build up our own competencies. And then Russia and Belarus, together with the multinational people of the Union State, will win any confrontation and once again prove their greatness and special civilizational role in the world.